Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What a great honor it is to be standing in front of a such distinguished crowd. Let me start off by first of all congratulating you for two things. The first one, for making it through here and graduating, and the second one, for coming back. I know the only thing that's running through my head right now is getting my diploma and getting out of here before it's too late. <laughs> my name is Edgar Robles, and I am a current junior studying civil engineering, and I'm here today to talk about my experiences at mine so far. Before I get started, I would like to take a brief moment to talk about my history. Growing up, education was a word that wasn't said enough around the house. When I was in middle school, I would always ask my parents for help on simple math. But let's face it, as scientists and engineers, simple math might not be so simple to others. As much as my parents saw me struggle, it killed them on the inside knowing that there wasn't much that they could do to help me out. My parents never got the chance to attend a university or even go to a high school. On numerous occasions, my parents have both cried out and apologized for not giving us a better life, a life they dreamed that they could have for themselves as they too were growing up. My parents had always stressed the value of education from the get-go, simply because that presented more opportunities for me. When my parents would find me up late at night studying, they would come home for, as they would come home from their second jobs, they couldn't help it but to be proud of me, knowing that I was doing something different, something unique, a chance to make something out of my life. It was since then that I learned the importance of education. When high school came around, I did, I was well, I did well in sports, was involved in extracurricular activities, I excelled in my academics, meanwhile having a part-time job and watching over my four younger siblings. My teachers had asked me where I wanted to go to college, but deep down, I knew that that wasn't an option for me. In my eyes, if and when you did graduate high school, you would get a job just because. Little did I know that I could actually pursue a degree in which I had a passion for. I give credit to my high school professor, Dr. Dale Smith, for introducing me to a field in which I now love and enjoy doing. As a child, I would always go, I would always enjoy going downtown and admiring all the tall buildings. I could only imagine what great engineering skills went into constructing some of the marvels that we see today, such as the Eiffel Tower, the Panama Canal, or even the Olympic Stadium in Beijing, and many more around the world. To this day, I am still awestruck and amazed by the massive size of the skyscrapers mankind has been able to build. It blows my mind how buildings are able to stand so tall and firm, yet be strong enough to maintain their own weight. Before I knew it, I started looking at schools, namely in engineering. I applied to a couple schools, CSM, obviously, being one of them, in hopes of pursuing a degree in engineering. By being accepted into a university, it would bring me that much closer to having my lifelong dream of becoming an engineer a reality. As I continued my college search, so did the weird vibes from my extended family. I remember one of my uncles had told me, why are you even going to college? You will never have a chance. You might as well drop out now and become useful by getting yourself a job. As soon as he told me that, I was determined to disprove him, and it was since then where my ambition to further my education only grew stronger. Having such a close tie to my family, I knew going out of state was out of the question, which then came down to CU Boulder and CSM. As soon as I stepped on campus to Colorado School of Mines as a junior, I knew that this was the school for me. I graduated from John F. Kennedy High School with honors, and I was the first one out of my entire family, including all 67 of my cousins, to enroll in a state university. A couple weeks before Christmas, I received the greatest gift anyone could think of. And for me, it was getting an acceptance letter to the school of my dreams. School of Mines had everything that I was looking for, where I would be scoping, where I would be spending the next four years of my life. I wanted an institution that was small in class size, that had great career opportunities, as well as challenging with, with academics. Having perfect weather and being close to home was only icing on top of the cake. As everyone knows, there is no such thing as a free lunch. And even though I was already accepted, my parents and I were still faced with the burden of paying for school. Tim Marcus not only graduated from Colorado School of Mines in 1980 with a degree in petroleum engineering, but also went off to start off his own company, otherwise known as Vinico Incorporated. He was also able to create a scholarship program, otherwise known as the Denver Scholarship <coughs> Foundation. 
I can honestly say that if it wasn't for the future centers located across the Denver Public Schools, I probably would not be where I am today. It is thanks to the DSF that my parents and I can now rest easily knowing that the bill for going to school would be covered. The summer after I graduated high school, I was offered to do a summer bridge program, otherwise known as Challenge. This program was, and still is, being hosted by MEP, which stands for the Multicultural Engineering Program. And it is thanks to that, to that summer bridge program that I have found my home away from home. It was then where I met my lifelong friends. It's funny how, before doing the challenge program, in my mind, I had told myself that I don't need friends in college, that I could do this by myself. But boy, was I wrong. Staying up together, pulling all-nighters, and going to dinner together only brought us that much closer. And of course, the many adventures that we shared off of campus. I still think it's funny, the weird faces that we get when we go off of campus and make the many jokes students get, and just seeing their reactions is only the, it's only better. <laughs> I knew it was that these people that I now call my friends that I could rely on for anything. It is thanks to my friends that I have met here at Minds that I have made this ever long process so much easier and so much more enjoyable. Coming to Minds, I knew it had a reputation for its curriculum, but I never realized to what extent that would be. In high school, I would always find myself busy with a job, sports, and watching over my family. Thinking that I was ready for college, I took the challenge of becoming a freshman here at Mines. At first, I told myself that I pushed myself hard enough in high school to get me where I am at. And now, it would be a great time for me to simply coast through all my classes. As time went on, I found it harder and harder to, to coast through my classes as I became more involved on campus. As of right now, I, am currently, I currently hold a position on the executive board for the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers as Fiesta slash fundraiser. I am also part of the member of MEP, as well as the Student Ambassadors Program, where it is our responsibilities to share our history, facts, traditions, and stories with prospective students and their families. I am also a member of the President's Diversity Committee here on campus, as well as FOCUS, which stands for the Fellowship of the University Catholic Students, where I attend Bible studies when I can. To add on to the list, I also have a work-study position in the admissions and financial aid, answering phone calls and helping guests at the front desk. Last but not least, I tutor a student on my spare time. And as if that wasn't enough, the very little spare time I do have left over, I love spending with my family. During the short time that I have been here at Mines, it has certainly changed for the better, but I can't imagine how things were differently 30 years ago. President Scoggins has done an amazing job at taking his position very seriously and putting some thought and effort into running this school as if it was his own company. With great customer satisfaction is how a business becomes successful. And with us as the students being the customers, he has really gone above and beyond. Some of the recent changes that I have had the privilege of witnessing, um, in addition to the current Brown Building, our newest resident hall on, on campus, Maple Hall, as well as the pedestrian plaza and, of course, Marcus Hall, which is currently under construction. There are also various programs throughout campus to help students become that much more successful, such as the academic excellence workshops, tutoring, CSM 101, the Writing Center, and so many more. When people ask me, why Minds? Or, what do you like about Minds? My responses are many. I could personally go on and on, but for the lack of time, I will highlight a few of them. As a student ambassador, I love telling students the many exciting things our school has to offer. I tell them how I love the personalized attention from the staff and faculty members here. I know that when I am struggling with any course material, help is only an email away. It is truly incredible how upperclassmen cope with the freshmen here. When we talk about our struggles, they really do take their time out of their own day to help us out. I enjoy how friendly everyone is around campus. When they ask, how's your day going? They truly mean it. Having such a small campus has its pros and its cons. Although we aren't faced with the challenge of walking or having to walk 15 to 20 minutes across campus to our next class, we are faced with a sense of being close to one another. It is very easy to accumulate friends with the many classes that we all may share, along with the many clubs and organizations here on campus. 
Although this university is a hard place to get into, it certainly has its benefits. I've heard from many company reps that they love mine students simply because they are ready for the world. Thanks to our EPEX program and field session, CSM students are ready to take on any project that is presented in front of them. One question I do love answering is, where do you see yourself in the next five, 10, or even 20 years? My mind simply runs wild with ideas. One of them is being able to travel the world, and the second one is, of course, becoming the CEO of Robles Incorporated. Besides that, I can honestly see myself as a project manager, all thanks to the very busy schedule that I now have, with an engineering company. Ideally, it would be great to find a place near home, that way I could still be close to my family. But as more and more engineering projects present themselves across the globe, I will be ready to take on any challenge. A dream that I currently have, is that is of course as soon as I'm very successful, is to give back to my community through means of scholarships. It is my hope to be able to inspire a low-income student to proceed with a college degree, giving him or her the opportunity to come to realize that they too can proceed with an education in which they have found a passion for. Seeing their facial expression upon me telling them, don't worry about the money, I will take care of that, will be the highlight of my career. Never in a million years would I have expected to become a student at School of Mines. And now that I am, now that I am here, I simply cannot wait to get out. And I can't wait to get my social life back, of course. <laughs> now, I understand when I would always tell people that I wanted to go to School of Mines, they would simply reply, well, good luck. Nonetheless, now that I tell them about, upon my acceptance to this institution, they simply respond, congratulations, with great enthusiasm. And now, I know why. As many of you can relate, CSM was, and still is, a very hard place to go to. But for all of, us, all of us who have survived the tough and rigorous academics can easily say, after getting your diploma, life in comparison is nothing less than a walk through the park. Although many things have changed throughout the de recent decades, one, th one thing still hasn't changed. Regardless of where we go or who we meet along the way, we will still be willing to take on any challenges that is presented. In closing, I would like to add that I am currently looking forward to what is ahead of me. As for the time being, upon completion about this semester, I will be working hard in my field session, followed my, by my internship with CH2M Hill, all thanks to the wonderful people at the Denver Scholarship Foundation. And as, for, and as of last week, I received an offer to become a resident assistant after putting in an application for this year's Summer Bridge program. I am being, being able to coach high school students and prepare them for what lies ahead of them will be the highlight of my summer. Although I stand before you to congratulate you upon all of your successes, I can only dream of the day when I get my formal invitation to my 50-year reunion. Thank you.